So this is my new EE8B World War II era field telephone. Found it on eBay for 30 bucks. And it needs some work. It's super dirty. The whole inside is full of dirt from doppers. From uh, mud doppers. There's nest in there. Battery terminal is completely caked. So what we're going to do is try to get this thing up and running. I watched other videos. These things are pretty durable. And they require a little bit amount of maintenance to get them up and running. And so let's see if we can get this guy working. Okay, so here we are looking at the EE-8B telephone. Um, these were used throughout World War II, Korea War, and Vietnam. I tend to think this one is from Korea, Korean War. I will show you why later. But uh, one of the things I want to do from watching another video is I'm going to take the side panel off, put some 3-in-1 oil on the generator knob so this thing turns more freely. And then we will take off the terminals and sand those down, clean those up. The battery terminals are completely caked with dirt and funk. And so we're going to try to get this thing cleaned up and see if we can get it to work. Okay, so this is the inside of our EE8 World War II field telephone. This is where the bell is at. This is where the generator is at. It turns, it creates the amperage to make the uh, device ring. And here's our battery terminals that are super dirty and corroded. And so I think the first step before I do too much more, and we have a split line up here. So I'm gonna take off these terminals, clean them up with sandpaper, try to clean up this mud as best as I can. Put some lubricant down here on these cranks. I do know that the generator works because when I put my hand across the terminal like this and wind it up, I get shocked. So that is a, a good sign that the generator works. And so let's get started. I don't know if you can see this or not. There's these metal rods right here. They go up. That just have dirt all over them. And you have your battery terminals up here at the top. So this is a real fine sandpaper that I'm going to take. And just kind of get the dirt off of here. That's one of the first thing I need to do is get a brush or something. Probably the first thing I need to do is turn the fan off so you guys can So the first thing I'm going to do is try to clean up these battery terminals. Get this dirt that's caked in here out. You can actually see down here, it's pretty bad. So what I'm going to use is my trusty laptop cleaning tool. See what I get down in there. Maybe put some of this oil on here, break that dirt up a little bit. that dirt I don't know if that's 80 year old dirt 50 year old dirt after all these things were used in World War II going through Vietnam and I will show you later but I snuck a peek inside this handset and this thing was rebuilt here let me show you check this out take off this earpiece nineteen forty eight now you say, well, that phone was clearly produced in 1948, post-war. Post-World War II, pre-Korean War. 
And if you look at this mouthpiece, this definitely looks more Korean War. The interesting part is, this could have been built during Korean War, but this component was clearly made in March of 1943. So we have a crossed generational um, phone here. But I do, looking at this handset and the type of receiver on here, I do believe this is more of a Korean War era phone, but we'll worry about that later. Back to the task at hand. Probably could have went a little finer, but that's all right. I'm just trying to get the rust and debris off these terminals. Kind of looking at this, and I don't know if I take these screws out if I can just pop this whole enclosure out. I don't think I probably can. It would meet, definitely make it a lot easier to clean that. Just don't know what it's connected to on the other side. If it's a bus, I definitely don't want to cause any more damage. I think I should probably see if I can get it working without taking it completely apart. I'm not sure exactly what I'm looking at here. I'm gonna start stripping one out, so I'm gonna put it back in. So I'm hoping I can pop that off because there's a lot of dirt in here. Right here, as you can see. I don't know what's going on with that. turn our attention to this we have a okay so as it always happens here on our channel I got a phone call but I didn't stop working this is the original phone cord handset you got these little C clips on here um, but this one had a kink and was frayed out I don't know if you can see that or not right there and so I cut it off and I bought these, obviously they're not authentic. I need to figure out a way to get this red cap off so that at least when I put them on, it looks similar to these without the red cap and then I can just crimp it. But what I've done temporarily for testing purposes is I simply spliced the wires and screwed them on there. And so now if I take the handset and I actually talk into it, I can hear myself. So that tells me that it's working. Can't hear myself now, because I've taken my finger off the trigger. I can hear myself now. That's the trigger. So as of right now, I have a working handset. 
So what I have to do is figure out how to get this clip off here, which shouldn't be too hard. There's a crimp mark right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a crimp mark. There's a crimp mark right there. Anyhow, it's there, trust me. <laughs> so I'm gonna open that crimp mark up because this guy actually latches onto this hook to prevent the wire from getting pulled out. So I need to remove this guy, crimp it on here, and either find some of these style old school crimps or figure out a way to get these red caps off of here. I may just burn them off and then I can reattach that. And we have ourselves a working EE8 World War II field telephone. This has been a Digital 410 production. <laughs>